Well, hello and welcome to Gone Again. I'm Rick. Hey, um, I was just going over my gear, getting ready for an upcoming trip, and I decided to uh, go uh, through my fire starting kit here because I need to replenish it. But this is the one that uh, I always carry in our car. Uh, too big for hiking, but it's got everything necessary to uh, successfully start a fire, easily start a fire, and different ways of starting a fire. And I just wanted to show you what's in this kit. I always enjoy the art of fire making. <laughs> and uh, so there's always different ways of starting a fire in here, carried in here. Of course, number one is a Bic lighter, but anyways, we'll just lay this stuff out and I'll show you what's in all these little containers and everything. And Number one, Bic lighter. We all know that one, right? And make sure it's a fresh one. You know, sometimes maybe it could lose its pressure or something. You want to make sure you got a good lighter in there. Make sure there's plenty of fluid in it. I'm just, I just slipped this one in there. This is a brand new one to replace this very old, well-used one <laughs> that I've had in here for years. Hey, it still works though. There's nothing wrong with it. It still goes, but I just thought I better put a fresh one in. Bic lighter. Nice little pouch, don't you think? Little uh, piece of horn here for the loop. This is just for when we used to do the black powder shoots all the time around here, which we still shoot black powder muzzle loaders. Love to do that. Good fun. Anyways, it holds my kit real well. So you do need something to contain your kit. You know, something that keeps everything in one place. One thing that I needed to do was replace the Vaseline soap cotton balls that are in here that I always keep with me. These are the handiest thing. These are the best way to start a fire. I've tried everything, uh, different kinds of fire starters. These are first choice. You can see, look at this mess in here though. Some of them are, are actually soaked in pitch, <laughs> pine pitch. Oh boy, they burn hot and they burn a long time. But I'm going to replace some of these right now with just some regular Vaseline soaked cotton balls. When you're doing that, make sure it says 100% pure cotton because some of these are, are synthetic and they won't work as well or if at all need to be cotton. This is a little messy but it doesn't last long and basically you just do exactly what I said. You just saturate them with Vaseline. Don't put too much in because it ruins the, the, the way that the cotton itself wicks. The cotton provides the wick, the Vaseline provides the fuel. So you need a combination of both. You want to work that Vaseline into the cotton ball really well. Just kind of press it in. Looks like I have room for one more. All right there, but there's more. Let me show you what else I got in this kit. We'll go over it item by item because everything's important. I tried uh, wax, paraffin wax and dryer lint, but it didn't work as well. In fact, I'm throwing these away. I didn't like that at all. Compared to the Vaseline soap cotton balls, these just weren't as good. They don't, they don't light very readily. It's hard to get these to take a, to take a flame and start going on their own. Uh, probably too much paraffin wax and not enough lint, but anyways, for whatever reason, it didn't work. I like to use these type of fire starters. These are made by Rutland. I find them in Walmart in their uh, appliance center, you know, where they have uh, fans and all that kind of stuff. You'll find fire logs back there and you also find these not all the time, but when I see them, I get them. Let me show you what they look like. These are a fiber like this and you break them off like that. And they come, they make these squares and usually you'll take a square. Boy, I'll tell you for, for the average fire, just a half of one of these squares works, but, um, what you do is you basically twist it like this, just to kind of get a rough edge, a fibrous edge. And then this takes a flame really easy, either, either by match or a Bic lighter or something. And this burns for a long time. So this is paraffin soaked fiber. If you want a name for this, this is called bagasse. It's actually the leftovers from making sugar. This is from sugarcane. This is the fibrous part of the sugarcane plant. They used to make a thing called canic board out of this. In fact, they probably still do. That's what you saw used as ceilings in uh, old houses was this 
volcanic board like this stuff. Anyways, it makes a fantastic fire starter. I always have some of this with me. Usually carry it in a, in a baggie, just kind of keep it separate. So in here you'll find some of those fire starters like I just mentioned. I always have several of those. Maybe a piece of wood that's saturated with uh, pitch like this off of a pine tree. I always keep a little fat wood that I can kind of split up into splinters and easy to get a flame going with a match once you have some fat wood splinters or fat wood shavings. And that's what this is, it's fat wood. This is empty, this needs to be refilled. But what I keep in this bag is cedar bark shavings. This is the birch bark of the West. It has a natural oil in it and it takes a flame readily and burns hot. So I usually have some long strips of this because you peel it off the tree in strips that are anywhere from six inches long to two or three feet long. Good stuff. Cedar bark. Or it's, it's from the juniper trees, but that's a cedar tree. When Linda and I head south pretty soon, in the next few weeks or a couple of weeks, um, I'll be filling this with cedar bark again for the kit. Okay, well those are the tenders that I carry for starting a fire. Now let's, let me show you what I use to actually light the fire. Matches are really important, of course. Now I carry two different varieties. One is these Yuko brand matches, which you can usually find at your, like Walmart or sporting goods stores, and they're Strike Anywhere matches. I like them better than the Diamond brand because they actually have a little better, a little hotter phosphorus on the end, so they strike a little easier. You remember the old movies like with Humphrey Bogart and they would just strike a match so easy and light their cig cigarette or cigar? Well, they don't put that much phosphorus on a match anymore because <laughs> the problem with those was as you're driving down the road and this is bouncing in the, in the glove box of your car, well, those were going off. So they don't, they're not quite as, uh, as good as they used to be for striking a fire, today's modern matches. Just not enough phosphorus on the head. But anyways, these are better than most, these Yuko brand, U-C-O. Really easy to light these Yukos. They're just skinny, so they don't last too long, but it's a good match. I carry them still. Then the other match that I actually prefer, and it's not a strike anywhere, you can, you can only strike them on the box, but the box is very rugged, and the, striking, the striker on the side of the box, on both sides, is very big. You can see it compared to the Yuko one here. And that's these Coleman uh, waterproof matches. These are great. These strike very easily. And even when they're damp, they strike really easily. And it's easy to get a fire going with these. And they burn a long time. This is my favorite match, is these Coleman waterproof matches. Now here is a really old, old, old box of those waterproof matches. I don't even know if I can, I mean, it is old. Let's see if I can even get it open. Seems to be kind of sealed shut, it's so banged up. <laughs> I wanna see if they still light. They're so old I can't even get this box open. Something's, you know, it's sealed itself. But let me get a match out anyway. Really struggling here. Okay, old, old box. You can tell the match is really old. But anyways, Oh gosh, yes, away it went. So anyways, they last a long time in your pack. I got a box in my car that I just taped back together because <laughs> it's been in there so long, but the matches are good. For sure, don't carry paper matches. Uh, thank you, Albertsons, but at the same time, I don't carry these. These are the worst. A little dampness and they're done. Okay, so another thing I like to carry is a ferro rod. Now, a ferro rod in its most basic form would be like this one here. You buy at the, any store, you know, like even Walmart sells them. Um, these have magnesium on them on this side, and the idea is to scrape up. Um, I don't, this isn't the scraper that it came, for, came with. They come with their own scraper. This is a hacksaw blade that I use. It's a little better. But anyways, you scrape off the magnesium and you make a pile of the magnesium. Do it on top of a big leaf or something like that. 
and make a big pile of magnesium. It actually takes a little time. But then, when you hit that with the spark from the ferro, it lights the magnesium and it burns really hot for a second. And boy, the magnesium, when you, if you've got a pile of it, it only burns for a second, but it is hot. So if you've got the pile of magnesium and then you've got some pieces of uh, birch bark or something like that or some other light tender, it'll light it right away. So this is the most basic you can buy is this kit here uh, that you can use and buy at any, good, any sporting goods store. What I like is a big ferro rod like this one that I carry in that leather bag. And basically you strike this with anything that, well, you can even use that same striker that I was just using. Or you can use the back of a sharp spline knife. This one is rounded, so it's not gonna do it. But just to show you, this is just the same thing I was just using on that other little ferro rod. This one really, you get a lot of, a lot of spark from this one. It it's makes a very hot spark, but a ferro rod of some kind. You can buy them like this, only smaller at most sporting goods stores, and they'll come with their own striker that you can uh, use on them. This is my preferred style of ferro rod, though. You can buy just these rods on Amazon. This one is about mm, half inch in diameter. This ought to last me the rest of my life, that's for sure. Then the most fun for me is flint and steel. I like doing fires this way. I usually carry a couple good pieces of flint, a good steel. I made this one from a file myself, or you can buy steels for flint and steel fires. Look up flint and steel on Amazon, you'll see kits. And to use flint and steel, you've gotta have char cloth. I did a video recently on how to make char cloth, but Basically, you light the char cloth and then you put that in a bundle of dry grass or cedar shavings, something like that. And you put that in the middle uh, after you get this, after you put the spark on this, and then you blow it into a flame. You can use char cloth or you can use char punk. And that's what this is. This is char punk. Basically, this is the punk wood off of a tree, you know, rotted tree stumps that have that square shaped pattern on them because they're rotted. Well, you take that, those chunks and you char it in a closed tin like this. Notice the hole in these tins. That's because this one, char cloth, is made out of 100% cotton material. This is 100% cotton t-shirt material that's been cut up into two inch squares. Then you put it inside this tin, you throw this on a fire, and smoke will come out of here. When the smoke starts coming out, it's done, and inside it'll look like this and it'll be char cloth. It's hard to find flint in Montana, so we pick it up down in the, when we're in the southwest, just laying around. Sometimes you find piles of it where the Native Americans were actually getting flint for their own use. They didn't use it for flint and steel, they used it for arrowheads. It's the same kind of stuff, flint, agate, something like this will work. And I like to get a piece that's big enough that I can rest that char cloth on top, like this. Lay it on the top, put your thumb over it, and use the steel on it. Getting some good sparks here. Oh, almost. There, I got one. So, I know it's going to be hard for you to see, but on the edge of that cloth is a little a uh, little flame, not a flame, but an ember. And that's what you would take and you would lay it into that bundle of, of dry grass or something and you would blow that into a flame. That is such a fun way to start a fire. It's very satisfactory. I don't do bow drills and friction fires. That's too much work. Two other things you'll see in my kit. Well, one is just an old candle stub. I don't know. It's just in there. It might be of some use in starting fires. And the other thing is, this is a little blow tube I made off a piece of arrow shaft in a tube. You can buy them that, are, that extend like a antenna on a radio. And you can buy those and keep those in your kit. And basically it's just a blow on the fire to keep your face out of the fire so that you can blow on the flame to keep the fire going or to bring it back to life. 
So that's in my kit too. Well, that's what's in my fire kit. Now it's been replenished. I can put it back in the car and we're ready to hit the road as far as making a fire is concerned. And this makes for nice, enjoyable evenings or maybe in an emergency. I just used it a couple of days ago. I was up in the mountains with my granddaughter and we were flying drones and just having fun. And I used it to light the fire for our cooking that day. So it comes in handy. Anyways, it's ready to go. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, you know the drill. Like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you around. As we go through life, it's plain to see that we seek the joy of eternity. We have arms and legs and eyes to see, but inside there's a void, a mystery. You can ride a race car fast, fly a kite in the sky. None of these things can satisfy the burning desire to feed the fire of the spirit within. We can try yoga, transcendental meditation, or a painter's smock, but only God has the key that fits that lock. We go to the woods and stare at nature, yet fail to introduce ourselves to the Creator. You can't get to heaven without meeting the host, and what fills that void is the Holy Ghost. Putting something else there God won't condone. He created that space for Him alone. And letting him fill it means you're never alone.